This is the open day one. Right now I'm at home in West Midlands of England, but we are traveling across today to go to the Open Championship, which is about four hours away. So let's get started. I'm gonna be bringing you guys along for the ride every single day I'm at the Open, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and bringing you these videos in the evening of what I get up to during the day, what players I see, who I interact with, what else there is to do at the Open. So let's get started and let's get over there. So a few hours later and managed to make it to the open parking, just walking in now. I think um, Spieth, Jordan Spieth and Bryson DeChambeau are paired together today and tomorrow. So I'm gonna, they teed off this morning, but I think I might be able to just catch the last maybe nine holes or so, or maybe last few holes. So I'm gonna head over there now and see if I can run up and find them and then Rory is playing later this afternoon so we're gonna see if we can follow Rory around and get some some footage for you guys as well so it's an exciting day lots to do lots to see so let's get started and we are here guys the open day one who will win I'm gonna go see if I can find Jordan Spieth and Bryson DeChambeau let me know who you guys want to see who who should I go watch I'm gonna watch Rory later as well so here you guys join me on the 14th hole. I'm just waiting by the 14th green for Jordan and uh, Bryson. This is Jordan's ball here. And this is Bryson playing his approach shot. It's a par five. He was playing his second shot in and check this out. Rolls almost right up to the flag. Has probably a 15 foot putt for Eagle. That's from all the way back there. Couldn't even hardly see them. Here's Jordan just walking up to the green, got a bit of swagger about him, looking and feeling pretty good after he'd made a few birdies in a row. It's his ball there, maybe 60 yards or so short of the green. It was a little bit awkward, maybe 60, 70 yards short of the green to that back pin. Um, I was a little bit surprised he hit it so far down there. Here's Brandon Grace's approach to the 14th. Absolutely awesome approach, nearly stiffs it right next to the flag stick. It was absolutely awesome. The crowds were going crazy, even though it was half capacity, um, didn't feel that way. Here's Jordan's approach. He took this in a lot lower than I thought he might. And on these firm link screens, it does bite, but just runs a little bit past it, maybe leaving him 12, 15 feet for the birdie after he'd already made a few in a row. This is Bryson's eagle putt here. Um, just goes just past the edge there and uh, this is Jordan's birdie putt and unfortunately could not hold that one so now this is the next hole the 15th this is Brandon Grace's approach into this hole um, just runs it 12 15 feet past the flag great great shot this is a really tough green here we have Jordan's approach even better check this one out almost right by the flag stick probably four or five feet for the birdie. Absolutely awesome. Bryson missed it short left. And here we have Bryson. It was quite a tough, it's quite a tough pitch this. Um, he actually did pretty well. Probably got it to about eight feet or so. Uh, this is Brandon Grace's birdie putt here, right in the middle. Absolutely awesome. He was playing really well, actually. Um, you know, even though he wasn't the feature of this group. Bryson, unfortunately, just misses his par putt. And here we have Jordan for the birdie. Never anywhere else. One of his many birdies of the day. The crowd is going nuts for him. Here we have Jordan on the next hole, the 16th hole. Check out this par three. It's absolutely awesome. It's surrounded by hospitality and grandstands. Has an awesome feel about it. Jordan, I couldn't actually see where the ball came down. You guys might be able to see it here. Um, I think it was just right of the flag. It looks from the tee like like you can't really see the green that much. It's pretty protected, but it is actually a pretty big green at the end of this video I show you. And here we have Bryson hitting his approach to into the 16th. Unfortunately, you can see there's a lot of people around, so didn't really get very close to them. So I then went to the 17th tee, just walking on here now, and Jordan doing some, some practice swings here. Jordan hits a really good drive down here, um, just kind of like a baby draw. Uh, Bryson here getting pumped up for his tee shot down the 17th. Let's see what he can do. Unfortunately, you can just see his back foot slip there and he just looks at it like, what the hell happened there really? 
Um, not really Bryson's day yesterday. This is Bryson's approach into the 17th. They were quite far down there. His was just a little bit right. And he just runs it, took it in low, runs it past. This is Jordan now approach into 17. They were almost drove the green. And, you know, pretty tricky pin there just up the ledge. So they both were just a little bit past it, playing it quite safe. It was tough. This Bryson's birdie putt there. And here's Jordan. That was Jordan's par putt, actually, just tapping in for par. Bryson, unfortunately, three putted. That was his putt for par. Could not get that one to drop in the hole. Here we got a good close-up look of them. Here's Brandon Grace walking past and Jordan. On, got a really Jordan. good close-up look of uh, Jordan Spieth there. You, you can get pretty close, like, if you wait by the ropes. Uh, there's Bryson as well, um, just walking up there. Bryson actually wasn't as big as I thought he was going to be, to be honest. Um, here's Jordan's tee shot down 18, slow motion. Uh, I think this was quite good. I couldn't actually see where the ball went. I think it was a little push draw. Uh, I think it was okay. Maybe you guys can tell me. Brandon Grace pushes this way right. And Bryson just hammered one down there. I'm not sure if it may have been a little bit left. Um, but we'll see. This is also Dylan Fratelli, who was in the next group. I couldn't really get close to them down the 18th, so I stayed by the 18th tee. Dylan Fratelli uh, and a few others were playing just behind them. And this is Brian Harmon again from the next group behind. And then he was also playing with Mackenzie Hughes here, who had a really good day. By the way, Brian Harmon is a really small guy, guys. It is proving to be a long day already. My knees are absolutely killing me. I've been running everywhere. I followed Spieth and Shambo and uh, Brandon Grace from about the, uh, what was it here? 12, 14th hole, 14th green, where they hit their tee shots into the par five. Both hit really, really good shots. Um, Jordan was just short of the green in two, um, pitched up and two pied for par. Bryson hit a really good approach with the second and um, just, I think, missed the eagle putt and tapped in for birdie. Um, Jordan looks to be playing really, really well, uh, putting, you know, everything, pace and everything looks pretty good. Um, iron play really good. I'd say that's been like the difference between the two of them, between Spieth and Deshambo. The difference has just been iron play, really. Um, but absolutely awesome day. I'm going to go to the range now to see if I can get a glimpse of Rory before he tees off about three. I might also grab some food because I haven't eaten today. And um, then we're going to jump out and follow Rory. I'm trying to run around. Even though the crowds are at like 50 to 60% capacity, maybe 70, there's a lot of people here. Um, and yeah, it's pretty nuts trying to get around. So kind of dodging and weaving in and out of people. But let's get back to it. So here is the kind of viewing area with this giant screen. It's one of a few viewing areas at the Open Championship. Tons of people eating and drinking. Now we have Rory warming up for his round, hitting a few bunk shots. Um, he hit a few bunk shots and then he hit a few chips and pitches. Then he went to the range and I've got loads of footage to show you guys of him uh, warming up here and at the driving range. We actually had a pretty decent view of him. Here's his coach, Pete Cowan, in the black came over to... Uh, kind of supervise things or just get a feel of how Rory was hitting it. The coaches do tend to walk around with the players during the round two. Here's Rory hitting uh, a few chips and pitches here. And in a second, you're gonna see, if we keep going, I think it might be this one. Watch this. Accidentally hits the uh, ball boy on the back there. Um, whoops. But uh, yeah, it would, would have been nice if he could maybe given him a signed glove or something for that. But just getting loose, just hitting a few chips and pitches. Rory's short game is quite underrated, especially his chipping and pitching. He was nipping them off this surface and really spinning them on these firm link screens, which is not easy to do at all. You know, look at this high little flop, delicate flop shot he's playing here. As coach Pete Cowan supervising things. Tommy Fleetwood walking across, getting ready for his round. He was playing in the group in front of Rory. And I get, I got some awesome footage of Rory, Tommy, Adam Scott, loads of really good guys, um, Justin Thomas as well. His little Rory pitch in slow motion, you can see how he really c connects with the ball first, then the ground, kind of hitting down into that ground using the bounce of the golf club. And just a few more little chips and pitches for you guys. 
and it was i you know you could probably learn more from watching them chip and pitch than you probably could at the driving range um because that i would say is a bigger difference than actually seeing them hit balls even though they're very very their ball striking is incredible i would say watching them chip and pitch is a bigger difference here's rory just making his way across to the range which was just left of us with pete cowan and his uh and his caddy there and here we had Rory, and then we had Justin Thomas warming up. He's in the group in front of him. And we had a few others. We had uh, Ricky Fowler there in the black, and Rory here in the orange. He started just warming warming up with some wedges. He probably spent the majority of his warm-up hitting wedges, I think. Um, definitely probably hit the most shots with wedges. I would say he probably hit 30 or so balls with wedges, maybe even more. Um, yeah, probably about 30 balls, and then he kind of slowly made his way up to the bag. You can see Pete Cowan standing down the line there. And then we had Bryson, after his round, make his way onto the right side of the range here. Quite a crowd gathering to watch these guys, which, you know, you can't really blame him. Who wouldn't want to watch these guys? Bryson, this is again after Bryson's round. He started warming up through the bag, and then we had Adam Scott on the right here. I was thinking, like, I am... Um, just unbelievably lucky at this point to have these guys here. You can see a few ball flights, if you can make that out, of Rory hitting here into the crowd. He hits it so high. Then we had Victor Hovland show up, then Rory in the white, then Bryson and Adam Scott on the right. So getting an even more high-profile range here. And Rory now hitting some irons, hitting some long irons. And Bryson going out with the driver. Bryson was not happy with his swing by the looks of things. Adam Scott on the right here. Adam Scott hits it lower than I thought. Uh, if you've ever watched him hit it in person, he hits a pretty flat ball flight. Good for links golf, but didn't have the best day. Um, here's Rory just pounding some three woods and drivers. You can see that ball flight sets off so high. It was absolutely awesome to watch. Um, Rory's ball flight's actually changed a bit since I last saw him. Here we can see Bryson and Adam Scott. Bryson not happy with that one. I last saw Rory at the Open like four years ago, and Rory's ball flight has changed a little bit. Um, it's, it's well, I would say he, he tended to have a bit more shape on the ball than the last time I saw him. Here's Justin Thomas making his way across, getting ready for his tee time, and we've got some awesome JT footage coming up for you guys. Rory pounding some more balls away. Um, Bryson working on some interesting feels here. He's trying to like feel like the club is coming maybe a bit more closed and from the inside here. It's kind of what it looked like to me with maybe that right elbow getting a bit more in front of him on the way down. Um, his coach wasn't on the range. Uh, here's Ernie Els. It was good to see Ernie, uh, you know, the big easy swing it with some sweet rhythm here. Uh, watched him clip a few on the driving range. It was really, really good to see. Here's Bryson. He was not looking happy. At that point, I actually didn't even know about any of the press conference stuff that happened with him. Here's uh, Alex Norrin slow motion, hitting some chips and pitches. This was really interesting. I watched him for maybe three, four minutes or so. Took some footage for you guys. Um, he has a very unusual chipping and pitching action. He gets a ton of spin on the ball. He really cuts across the ball, and he really comes down into the ground. He really, like, digs the ball. Here's his coach putting, like... Uh, some sort of, well, he's putting a club out in front. I'm assuming this is to stop him over swinging, stop his, you know, stop him a bit sooner, maybe get create more acceleration here. You get a good slow motion look of his pitching action. You can see he comes down pretty steep and he really hits the ground pretty hard, but he gets that ball first connection, which is really, really important. And if we watch this, check out the side spin he's getting on these shots. He gets so much spin, so much side spin. The ball's really working left to right. Um, it was quite interesting watching this. It's not a pitching action I would maybe recommend copying. You can see like it's a short pitch shot here and he's taking a lot of ground here. Um, but, you know, really good player. It was what, interesting to see him doing these drills too. Really, really interesting watching this. And, um, you know, I'd quite like to watch him on the range sometime hitting balls. Um, again, i would probably do an Alex Noren swing video on my channel at some point. But... Um, I just absolutely, I recommend if you are going to the Open or have been to the Open or any other event, by the way, guys. Also, he was doing this drill here where he, like, drew a line on the ground. He was working on some low point control, I think, trying to, like, 
basically hit the ground after the line, kind of like you would in a bunker, I guess. Um, I got kind of hungry after that, so I uh, ended up queuing for a while for some food. Um, I have to say the queues were massive for food. I, it took a while to get some food. Here's what I got in the end, just some chicken nuggets and a chicken burger whilst uh, watching some golf on the big screen. And as I was saying before, guys, if you, have, if you are going to a golf event, go to the short game area and watch them because you'll pick up a lot from that. Here's the open scoring zone, the scoreboard with the big screen. Hey guys, what's up? How's it going? So, just stopped and had some lunch for a little bit. Got myself an ice cream now. Gonna chill, walk around and eat this. I'm just hiding behind this car because the wind is really, well, it's very windy. And um, I don't have a microphone, so I hope you guys can hear this okay. But yeah, the sun is out. Uh, Rory doesn't look like he's playing too well. He's through nine holes, a few over par. Hopefully he can get it back. I'm going to go try and find him, uh, Rory and Adam Scott right now and see if I can walk around with them for a few holes whilst uh, chilling, eating an ice cream. So um, I don't know if it gets much better really, does it? It is pretty warm, but it's very windy. So just make sure you, if you guys are at the open, you've got loads of sunscreen on. So yeah, let's get out there, see if we can find Rory and Adam. I watched them both on the range earlier, and that was pretty awesome to watch. Both of them next to each other with Bryson DeChambeau, Ricky Fowler, um, who else is there? Victor Hovland. It was absolutely awesome to watch. And how sick is this car too, by the way, guys? Absolutely awesome. A uh, little Mercedes, custom Mercedes for the Open. Honestly, this ice cream was so good. I'm going back to the Open today. I'm going to be bringing you two, three, and four day videos of every day of the Open. And I'm definitely going to be getting some more of those ice creams. Here's Adam Scott out on the golf course. Uh, quite an interesting little putting, uh, putting method there. I'm not exactly sure what you'd call that one. Uh, Adam Scott was playing the group in front of Rory. So here's Rory. Waiting. I can't remember exactly what tee this was. It might have been 10. Um, I th yeah, I'm pretty sure it was 10, 10th tee. It was either 10 or 11. Uh, Adam, uh, Rory was playing with Cameron Smith here. And I got some good footage of all these guys for you. He's playing with Cameron Smith and Patrick Reed. Here's their tee shots in slow motion on this hole. Here's Patrick Reed. Um, Patrick Reed, not so much a fan favorite, but actually a really, really good golf swing. Probably going to do a swing video on him at some point too. I don't think he played very well though. Um, he definitely hit some ropey shots, which I will be showing you guys I got on footage. So just walking down the 10th and I uh, just watched, uh, first of all, Justin Thomas, Tommy Fleetwood and Adam Scott play. And um, they all hit pretty good tee shots. Adam Scott hit iron a little bit right, but Tommy and uh, Tommy uh, flushed his straight down the middle basically. And um, just watched Rory hit uh rory what who is it rory um cameron smith and uh rory cameron smith and patrick reed and rory he looked okay on the range he was a bit more wayward with like the longer clubs earlier he was kind of with three wooden driver he was occasionally getting a bit of like a pull hook left a little bit and it seems like he has hit a few of them on the course this one um, went a little bit left so we're gonna get up here and see uh, see how he's getting on and follow him around the last uh, last uh, eight holes or so so I'm absolutely knackered by by now by the way guys I've been on my feet all day so here's Patrick Reed's next shot wedge shot into this hole I actually couldn't see this come down really I'm not exactly sure where it ended up it looked a bit long here's Rory's second shot he was just a little bit left off the tee quite a tricky spot you can see he actually played a pretty good shot i'm not sure what length putt left him maybe 20 feet this is a good look at the 12th tee i went to next i uh, skipped a few holes skipped kind of the uh 11th of par three and here's uh cameron smith off the 12th so you can see it's right by the ocean there it's probably the closest you really get to the ocean uh 12 and 14th tees right by the water of Patrick Reed and Rory. Um, uh, Rory and Cameron Smith, I think, hit pretty good tee shots on this hole. I think Patrick Reed might have been a little bit left. Um, here's Cameron Smith on the next hole. And this, uh, watch this, I can just relate to this all day. Well, I think we all can, four right. And here's Patrick Reed, as I said, left snap, low snap hook left. 
And then we get uh, Rory hitting an absolute straight bullet down there. This was a low drive. Really, really good shot straight down the middle. Here's his next shot, his approach into uh, into this 13th hole. And he just left him short side a little bit, short right. He had this delicate little kind of chip pitch uh, shot. He hit to about, I think, four or five feet. I couldn't see if he hold that one. I had to skip ahead a bit. This is actually Tommy Fleetwood and Adam Scott's group on the next hole and Justin Thomas as well. This is actually the 16th tee, what I showed you earlier, guys. So I waited here and then Rory came along with his group after them. Uh, you kind of have to skip ahead if you are going to the open. You can't really follow all the way. Here's Patrick Reed. Um, you kind of have to like skip ahead a few holes, try and find a good viewing spot. I have to say the, the viewing areas maybe not the best at this open it's kind of a little bit tricky you can't get that close to players um like this is probably one of the closest shots i got here on this uh the 17th tee i believe and then here they're walking onto the 18th tee rory and patrick reed and uh here's their tee shots down 18 rory i think hit a really good tee shot down here um patrick reed Pretty good shot down as well, some people calling. So guys, right now I'm by the uh, 16th green. This is a little par three, it looks absolutely insane. It's got this grandstand like all the way around almost. Kind of reminds me a little bit of like the um, Scottsdale uh, in Arizona, uh, Phoenix Open. Um, definitely has those sorts of vibes, looks insane. It's a really difficult tee shot. I've just been following uh, Rory and a little bit of Adam Scott and Tommy Fleetwood, a little bit of Justin Thomas. Um, I think Rory's been a bit frustrated today. I think everyone's been a bit frustrated for him. Ma massive, massive cheers. It's really funny how much more cheers uh, Rory gets than, than someone like Patrick Reed, who's maybe not as popular. But um, yeah, unfortunately, jacket's on too. Temperature's just dipped. Rain's coming down a little bit. Um, not too much actually, not too much. Actually, a ball's about to land on this green right now, so there we go. Not sure who hit that shot, but pretty good one there. Take that any day of the week. So guys, um, that's pretty much it for day one. Um, yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed this. I'm gonna be here doing day two, day three, and day four videos, so make sure you stay tuned for those. Give this a like, subscribe, comment your thoughts down below, reply to all your comments. And I will see you guys in the next one. As always, grip it and rip it.